think I'm ready. Hey, I'm Captain Eddie Castle and welcome to the shop. I'm out here today getting a few things ready. We talked about fixing something the other day. Sat down with one of my turning buddies and decided that was really the wrong way to go. So I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. But I also found another bowl. Thought I'd do this. Too. But then I'm going to fix that one too. I got a couple of things to show you. And you know the deal. All right. Got to watch. Some days around here, it's like Christmas time every day. Yeah, not snowy and cold, just Christmas time. It's when you get gifts that you really don't expect from people who just want to be nice to you. And I try to reciprocate and pay back these debts that I owe, but I'm, I'm amazed. I mean, I went to the post office, to the mailbox today, and I had a note from Ed Sharp. He's out of Needham, Massachusetts. And Ed said he wanted to say he enjoyed the videos and he wanted to give me something. So Ed sent me something. There you go, boys and girls. If you're a fisherman, you know what that is. That looks like a top water popper. But it's a top popper. You know, for, for beverage. I was going to put it on a beer bottle, but I'm not allowed to have that. So you can't do that. But Ed, Ed made this as EJS Woodworking at EJS Ten at Verizon.net, and he he made this for me. And this is modified from a fishing. This is awesome. This is I mean, wow. I get ink pens. I get bottle stoppers. I get all kinds of things. I got finger tops in the mail the other day. Uh, and that's for the finger top contest. And I called the guy and I said, I didn't want you to send me the tops. <clears throat> Let's talk about that for a minute. Once again, I have to say thanks to Ed, Ed Sharp from Needham, Massachusetts. I think I've been in a town. But it's beautiful. It's actually a beautiful gift. Thank you. I'm going to put it in there. When I ever go back to drinking carbonated beverages again, you can be want to bring me the scent. No, I mean, I'll bring, bring, bring the, boo, the booze to me. Uh, I bring, well, well, never mind. Okay, <laughs> let's talk. I said finger tops. You know what finger tops are? These are finger tops. This is a picture. One of our turners sent us. This is another picture. One of our turners sent us. And another one. And I'm going to tell you who they are because I don't want to ruin the contest. But people just sending me these things. We have a challenge going on. It started on tax day, April 15th. It ends on May 30th. I gave you a 45-day window to turn in groups of five. You don't have to turn five, but that's all you can put in one group for a photograph are five spinning finger tops. Did I say that right? Okay. Don't send me the tops. Send me the photograph and send it to this address. Only this address. All you folks that sent them to the telephone or the messenger service or Facebook or YouTube, this address only. Okay? I will collect these photographs for 45 days. And boy, they pour it in. I mean, you get a lot of them. And you can submit as many times as you want. You can rearrange the same five tops and take five pictures, or eight pictures, or ten pictures, or whatever. My judges are going to judge what those tops look like, the presentation of those tops. And my judges are going to give away three prizes. Now, this week I heard from Ackley, uh, the, the folks that make the sanding wax and the sanding um, uh, abrasive. Um, I'll talk about that when we do this other platter. But they said they're in. Uh, I just talked to Vince Welch with Vince of Wood Wonders. He's in. Um, oh, Vince, I forgot to tell you that. Yeah, you're in pretty deep. Um, he just turned 55. He's got to have something to look forward to. All right, but we're going to do this top contest. If you turn finger tops, send me the photograph to, again, this address. And on the 30th of May, my judges will get them, the three judges and our ladies, um, we'll get these top these pictures, and they will decide the top three. 
it might be top five. It might be more than that. But you never know how gracious we'll be at the time because we just think you do some gorgeous work and we want to see it. So that's what the top contest is. Now, last week we sat and chatted chat a little bit and I told you I had a, a platter that I turned about five years ago. Sit right here. And it went, it's clean now. See, Ronnie, my buddy Ronnie couldn't help himself. He got out the steel wool and cleaned off all the goop and crap. And, 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 and it's, wow, Ronnie, it's coming out really nice. Uh, but he cleaned it all up. Because he said, to put a ring on it, that's what we talked about, doing a ring. To put a ring on it may take away from this beautiful piece of wood. Because it is a pretty piece of wood. It is. Right? And then he says, and you know you're fairly thin. I said, no, I can't be that thin. So let's go over to the this thickness gauge gizmo and take a look at it. It's running zero. Open it up and carefully go to the center. I don't want to scratch it because then you got to sand it and scratch out. Don't touch it and. You can't get an idea what I'm dealing with because you're not looking at it. But I'm going to tell you straight up. I'm a little bit less than a quarter inch thick. Yeah. I managed to put a mark there. I can get that out. So I'm a little bit less than a quarter inch thick. And then he reminded me that I had done a series to where I was carving these. Not carving. Cutting them out with a NSK type spiral grinder, and I, and when he, after he said that, I looked on the wall in the garden room, and there's one with a couple of birds on it that I'd carved out, and it's the same piece of wood, the same kind of wood. So I have to think, I got this down to a quarter inch, a little bit of work that's going to get a little bit thinner, and that'll be easy to pierce and go through. You got to think about what you're going to work on. It's a quarter inch thick, it's a quarter inch of cutting. An eighth inch thick, it's an eighth inch of cutting. You got that? Okay. But instead of putting up an edge on this that would decorate the edge, we're going to decorate the pattern, the, the wood and save the wood. Thank you, Ronnie. Appreciate it. When you sit with your turning buddies, things happen. You solve the problems of the world. The Mideast would be livable if fate, they just let the wood turn to take care of it. All right. So we're going to do that. Now to hold it, I'm going to put it on my vacuum chuck because I told Ronnie I'm going to go make a glue block that you can get off easily, you know, as part of the demo. Well, I might still do the glue block, but not on this. But I want to show you how easy it would be to put one on and take it back off without damaging your work when you just run out of way to hold it. You can hold it. So we're going to put it on the, on the vacuum chuck. We're going to grab it from the face. And we're going to dress up this back and then reassure this thickness. Uh, a few things talk to me about it. And uh, then we're going to flip it around, go to face side, clean all this up, and put a new finish back on it. And when I do that, I want to use that Ackley's paste, uh, Axe paste, to, to massage the finish because I'm going to put a, a really good gloss on it. And I want this to kind of speak to you a little bit on the wall. I want you to see this one. I want it to glint when you walk through the room. That's important. I saw a bowl at Ronnie's house the other day. He did out of red cedar. I'm not a great fan of red cedar because it cracks easy. Ronnie got this log of red cedar from a guy that we know. And he, he brought the log home and he shaped a nice vase out of it. And he sent me a, or a bowl. He sent me a picture of it. I was mesmerized. I'm talking about quality turning and the finish was awesome. Now, this is some guy that would sand with bricks in the past, but today it's a different show. Really a different show. He learned how to cut. He learned how to slice. He learned how to get his work in great shape to sand. And then when he sanded it, the presentation of the wood poof, blew up right in front of you. I mean, it was gorgeous. Absolutely go I might have a picture of that. If I do, I'm going to add it on here to show you. This is a piece that he just, a block of wood, all right? And it's got some fractures in it. They're all closed up. Got some cracks. They're all sealed up. 
Got a beautiful finish on it. Spent a little time to make this turd and rough look like a diamond and it's shining. So, good move, good move. I want to get some red cedar and play with it a little bit. I do like the way it comes out. Now, I had cleaning up. I found some other projects that we put away about five years ago when I had the brain tumor and lost some of the brain. And it's the reason I'm a little slow nowadays is I've got a, a, a blood problem um, and it put me into major low gear and I, I didn't understand why I was feeling bad. Well, that was really over the edge. No problem. I'll be all right. I was just in low gear. And I want to step up, you know, shift gears a little bit. Now, I did this bowl. And this is a nice little piece. I think it's pecan. Um, i got to go look up the number on it because I did number them at that time. But it's a pretty little piece, shaped out nicely, and I left the natural edge on it. And that's one the other day I said to Ronnie, talking, I said, you know, I could cut that edge off and put a ring on it. And he said, why would you want to ruin a gorgeous piece? You know, he's absolutely right. Sometimes you just got to stop and I did. I stopped and I thought about, well, I don't want to take this edge off. I want to fix it. So let's get in here a little bit where you can see what I'm doing. I'm a little separated up in here. See it? Kind of hard to see, but I got some separations here. On the other side. And at the high point, got some little separations coming in. You, you, can't, you can't really can't appreciate them, but they're there. So what are we going to do? We. It's me and you going to do this. I got my Starbond Medium EM 150. And I got to looking at this. If I put a little pressure on it, I can close those joints up. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a little EM 150 in there. That's the medium thick. All right. Not the thin, 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 because it just run right through. As far as this goes, it's almost run right through. I'll put a little bit on there. This is the hard part. Then I'm going to put the pressure on it and hold it for a few minutes. I'm not going to spray accelerant. I'm not going to spin on it to make it go faster. I'm going to let time do what time does. And this adhesive is going to cure in a minute, maybe less. And then I can work with it. Now, notice the gloves. Yeah, lately I've been forgetting about putting my gloves on when I'm doing some ink pen projects. And I got a great looking ink pen project to show you, but I got to hold it to have to show it off with the club. Um, but I'm neg negligent in putting on my gloves. Well, the other day, a guy came by, we were talking about it, and I was sitting there picking up the, the super glue that was on my fingers and sanding it off. And he says, You know, if you clean your hands with WD 40, that'll go away. And he doesn't know he's talking to the anti-WD-40 king of the world. I really don't believe that's a solution to everything. You know, if it doesn't move with WD-40, if it moves too much duct tape. I, I heard those stories. But this is, oh, this is just curing up nicely. All right, yes, very nicely. Closed it up. Yep, it's doing just what I wanted it to do. But I cleaned my hands with that WD-40, and it cleaned off all that all that stuff and helped me get it off. So the next day when I was doing this pen project, I needed to do a little more super glue on a, on a piece to put it in. And uh, I said, well, what if I clean my hands before I do the WD-40? So I got my little can of spray, spray can WD-40. Oh my God, I'm on, oh no, it's over in tray. And I sprayed my hands and cleaned them with the WD-40 before I did the super glue. And it didn't stick to me. How about that? So this guy come by telling me I've been misdirected on this W40 all these years, and he knew the secret. He knew the formula. So that one worked. We got that joint done. I'm going to go in here. I've got a little lift here, a little crack, and a little lift. And I like this medium thick because it doesn't run clean through, but I can massage it down in there. And since I'm wearing a glove, I can massage it and get it to go down in there. Then I'm going to bring the, bring the piece back together again. 
a little pressure on it. I can see I got no pressure on it because I see the glue coming out in a couple of spots. And I'm going to do it again and let time take its time and seal this bag. Now, Larry? Larry's a cop buddy that stops by occasionally. He stopped by yesterday and we're talking about this and he says, well, you know, if you take some of that blue painter's tape, i got to look at it and remember what it's called. You put that blue painter's tape on here when you tape it down, it'd be better. My fear is, I'll tape the tape. I'll glue the tape to the piece, and then i got to get the tape off the piece, too. And trust me, and all that I want to do here, I don't want to remove too much material. Because this bowl is about ready, uh, and it's, it, it's, ob, it's oblong. I picked this one to do this project on because it is not truly round any longer. So it's going to give me a nice working, a uh, nice plat palette to work with to show you how to sand and clean one up that has been uh, not neglected. Well, it was not neglected. It was left on the shelf back there for five years. But a little more drop in, in the joint. Now, I do not believe this is a great filler. We're not getting good contact. We're not going to get a bond there. This is not that monster glue or anything. And I don't want to break off any pieces because I got some ridges in it. And this is it. Now, you know what the next step of this is? The next step for this is the weight. That's got to cure. And then I want to come back and top it with a little bit of the thin to make sure all the little bit of cracks are done. And that's with the medium thin. And I'll put it, just drizzle it back in there, make it in, and make it go in. And that's going to bring these pieces back into usefulness once again. I'm going to do that, and we're going to turn it using the vacuum chuck, or a jam chuck, or whatever. Well, let's first of all let's see how football or shape it really is. Then figure how we're going to sand the inside of this puppy and get it cleaned up. Did a good finish on it. All right, that's coming up. But don't forget, we in that challenge right now for those finger tops. If you need more details, I did a video on it a couple of weeks ago, and but send me those pictures. Get them in here. You got until May 30th to turn those finger tops. And I asked a guy at our wood turning club, Southern, they call it now, Southern Bayou Wood Turners. Yeah. I asked him, I said, I want to do a demo on finger tops. You think we could do a challenge? And the first response was, yeah, but what do we do with the tops? A day or two later, I heard back from him. He says, he's got a contact at the local children's hospital pretty good contact. And he says, you turn the tops, I'll find the kids. So that's what we're going to do with the tops we turn in our club. What are you going to do with the tops you turn in your club? I've got I've the Beads of Courage. I've seen all kinds of little programs out there. But this is something you do with shop scraps. Get artistic with it. Have fun with it. And put a smile on the kid's face. Nothing better than that than making shavings. You know the deal? That's what I'm doing right now. I'm making shavings. See you again real soon. A couple of days for the glue to dry.